Life in Rannoch is very quiet. It's, uh, it's a beautiful area. But Rannoch is a, it's a very personal place too. Not a big population, but lovely wildlife, beautiful landscapes. And uh, I love it. I've known it since 1970 and love it a bit. This is entirely the wrong place for a wind farm. These are the mountains Scotland is renowned for. Wild, rugged, hostile and serene in equal measure. They're filled with space and time and can cure or revitalise in a way doctors can only dream about. Scotland's mountains offer opportunities for thinking in a fast-paced world. Achievement and self-improvement with every step taken or ridge traversed. The views are immense, even in the worst of winter. A trip to the mountains allows us to hit the reset button, fold away all our laundry and start afresh. You always feel very different when you get home compared to when you first arrive at the foot of the beast. One of the most celebrated writers of mountain poetry and prose was Nan Shepherd. She was able to capture the feelings and emotions which we all experience in the hills but can never find the words to describe. Her work includes In the Cairngorms and A Pass in the Grampians, which are now regarded as classics and evoke what is really meant by being immersed in our mountain landscape. It's a grand thing to get leave to live, she said in The Living Mountain, and this perfectly encapsulates the feelings of many who wander in our more remote areas. Is this what she meant when describing green pinions and angels? Onshore wind turbines capture the kinetic energy from the wind and convert it into electrical energy. There are over 160 onshore wind farms in Scotland. They range in size from individual small-scale turbines to large-scale sites such as Whiteley, which powers hundreds and thousands of homes and businesses. As this map shows, there are few places where the shiny white windmills can't be seen from. From the islands to the lowlands, it's as if the old Caledonian pines of centuries ago have been replaced by a new forest of metal trees. A 67 turbine farm was approved at Stronlerg near Fort Augustus in June 2014. This is in the Monolith Mountains, a well-known walking and climbing area. If we build a few more wind farms of this size, then the last wild spaces in Scotland will be gone forever. There are two forces at work here, both seemingly far more powerful than the glaciation that created our mountains in the first place. The first is our need for a secure energy regime, where power is produced that is clean, green, efficient and not at the mercy of other nations and governments around the world. The Scottish Government has taken a lead here and its targets are ambitious. Its 2020 route map for renewable energy in Scotland established a target to meet an equivalent of 100% demand for electricity from renewable energy by 2020. This is a target they are well on course to achieving. The roadmap update published in December 2013 states that the government wants to see a range of renewable technologies developed across Scotland. However, at the moment, the renewable sector in Scotland, as well as our horizons, are dominated by onshore wind. The second force at work here is those who want to keep our landscapes natural for plant and wildlife to grow and where nature is allowed to be the deciding factor in how the landscape evolves. Organisations such as the John Muir Trust, the Mountaineering Council of Scotland and national park authorities all work to care for and help protect the environment for people and wildlife. The John Muir Trust has been a vocal opponent of many wind farm projects in Scotland. Wild land is the key issue for many wind farm proposals, as these are often the windiest places in Britain. Recently, Conservative MSP Murdo Fraser secured and led a debate on objections to the proposed Talavay wind farm in Rannoch. There were about 40 members of the public in the gallery, but far fewer MSPs. The most telling point of the debate was made by Michael McMahon, MSP, who said... If a developer was to suggest building a multi-storey building taller than Glasgow's Red Road Flats on Rannoch Moor, they would get laughed out of any planning committee. During the same debate, Rob Gibson, MSP, asked why local people shouldn't benefit from the development of natural resources such as wind power. Examples of this type of fund can be found around the country. 
through the Griffin Wind Farm, which started producing electricity in 2012, more than £392,000 is provided per year to community and charitable projects in the Aberfeldy, Dunkeld and Kenmore areas. By 2037, it is expected that £9.8 million will be invested in local projects. Grants already given to community and charitable projects include £100,000 towards the cost of the redevelopment of the Burke Cinema in Aberfeldy, £20,000 towards the cost of purchasing a new 4x4 all-terrain Land Rover for Tayside Mountain Rescue. In total, this comes to more than £1.2 million so far invested in projects that would otherwise have had to look elsewhere at scarce council or trust grants. The question is, do we want more renewable energy or a more industrial look to our wild land? Landowners, with estates and houses to maintain, are working with companies such as Falk and Scottish and Southern Energy to house wind farms on their land. Aventis, a Dutch company, want to build a 24 turbine farm on the Talavay estate near Rannoch Moor. This is an area of outstanding national beauty and inside an area designated as wildland by the Scottish National Heritage Wildland Map. The plans have united a host of opponents such as the John Muir Trust, the Mountaineering Council of Scotland and a local campaign group Keep Rannoch Wild who are vociferously against the proposals. I think very few people are hostile to wind farms in principle or to, to wind renewables in, in principle, very, very few. Talavay plans uh, obviously uh, arise from the, the subsidy regime, but the, the subsidy-driven incentives are so enormous that I can understand why estate owners would, would want to uh, take advantage of them. There are two major problems with, with this particular site. One, it's beautiful and should be cherished uh, for landscape purposes. It's just near to Ben Alder and Loch Erect. And the second is that it's a, an area of stunning wildlife, in particular young eagles, breeding eagles. There are other implications. Obviously, there will be a small number of, of jobs uh, created mostly during the construction period. The community obviously have, have a, a mix of views amongst them. The number of objections to this, uh, to this particular application is now reaching a thousand and that is from individuals and from organisations, not all locally. Uh, the second measure is the, the distribution list for Keep Rannoch Wild, the local opposition group, where uh, the, there is in the order of three or four hundred uh, people who have signed up to get emails. And given that there's only about 600 people in this valley, um, that is a, a big percentage. The, this scheme has been in the making for six years. That's not my estimate, that's the applicant's own estimate. Uh, the community was never asked uh, and never consulted from the start of this. This wind farm, if it is built, would totally dominate the, the, the track going up into wild country. It, it, would, it would make it no longer wild, it would industrialise the views uh, and there would be what are called community benefit payments which uh, I consider to be simply legalised bribes to the community. But if, if you scale up the capacity of this proposed wind farm of 75 megawatts by the £5,000 per annum recommended then that gives you the 375,000. The overall economic impact would be strongly negative. But, but it's, it's not just the absolute, the absolute volume of money and the, the balance of money. It is that you'd be substituting real economy uh, for you know, cosmetic community projects like uh, you know, painting village hall, putting up a play park, uh, maybe funding uh, youth groups, which are all worthy in themselves, <clears throat> but are not the same thing as real economic activity. It, in this particular case, it, it, is, it is a sight too far. It's, it's in entirely the, the, the wrong place. And yet, there are communities in Scotland who have embraced the opportunities presented to them by wind power. Driven by a wish to improve their village, the Fintry Development Trust took advantage of proposals by Falk Renewables to build a 14-turbine wind farm nearby.
they convinced the developers to build a 15th turbine for the benefit of the community. Many in the village of Fintry have had their lives improved through the various schemes and projects that the Trust has implemented using the income generated from that extra turbine. Fintry is quite a small village, um, there's about 500 folk in it and about 300, 350 sort of properties and it has the same kind of problems that any kind of village has, a rural area, um, you know, employment for local people and for young people, where do they go, what do they do, transport is pretty poor, we don't get any buses into the village. But the usual problems with any rural sort of community, it's uh, fuel poverty, um, we are off the main gas supply, so we rely on electricity um, and oil brought into the village and liquid um, propane gas brought in as well. Um, so, you know, very heavy usage on um, carbon rich fuels. A significant number of our, our uh, people living in the village were spending more than 10% of their income on keeping warm. Uh, FTC Development Trust, well originally there was uh, four guys who um, were uh, started a thing called FREE which is Fintry Renewable Energy Enterprise. So we um, along with uh, a, 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 another, another group um, put together the idea that we can actually put um, insulation within the properties within the village and that will drive down the carbon sort of usage and then from that we said well let's start, let's start giving grants out to people to start doing things where we can help um, put money towards um, elements like putting in secondary glazing, um, draft proofing, it kind of mundane stuff but the stuff that kind of makes a difference. A wind farm developer pitched up at our door one day saying we're thinking of putting a wind farm in your local area and that's actually quite a positive thing because people can actually look at one of the turbines and say that's ours, that's the mechanism that's bringing in um, a lot of um, um, good things for our village and for our community. Wind farms are fantastic. They, uh, they produce genuinely renewable electricity. They uh, produce you know, far more uh, energy than is ever used in their manufacture. Uh, the vast majority that I've seen, I believe, grace the landscape. The, the kind of downside is that they, 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 they're intermittent, so they, they produce electricity when there's enough wind. I think the only issue I would have is to do with um, where the money that they generate goes at the end of the day. Money that has gone into supporting it um, disappears out of local communities and in fact disappears abroad. When they see what's actually happening, the fact that we've been able to insulate more than half the homes, that two thirds of the houses are now insulated, um, we've been able to put in micro renewables into the village, so reducing our requirements to rely on fossil fuels. And I think if you compare the, the long term impacts of having a wind farm to any other form of generating electricity, um, the, the, the effects are, are negligible. And to see that this is not about profit and it's not about um, politics, it's actually about sustainability, it's actually about um, getting a renewable resource that we can use which isn't going to affect our kids and it's not going to affect the grandchildren and they'll be able to make use of it. You know I think, I think there needs to be more work done in terms of um, energy storage for example so that uh, you know, if, if, if wind farms are producing are capable of producing energy when it's not required, that energy can be restored and released into the grid um, when it is required. I'm pro wind farms. I mean, I've always been keen on renewables. You know, I think it, it's, it is the way forward. We, we, we have finite resources on the planet um, and we need to do something about production of energy um, that is um, renewable and is sustainable. So it looks like wind farms are here to stay. However, as Nan Shepherd might have said, how many great angels do we need to protect Scotland's mountains?